Okay. So speaking of uh, scalar and vectors, first, scalars are defined as quantity that has a magnitude only. Vector is defined as quantity that has a magnitude and direction. So, <clears throat> some of the known scalars are distance, mass, time, speed, energy, power, current, voltage, um, resistance, pressure, they're all scalars, uh, and there could be uh, other ones as well. So don't worry about that. Then vector quantities are displacement um, and um, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, moment. What else is a scalar? I don't know. <clears throat> what is the vector? Do you guys have anything Wait. in mind? Weight is a force. So I don't think so there's anything else. So then, yeah. I think that's, uh, you can call it pulse as, you know, but that's fine. All right, now, so how do we represent vectors? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then uh, vectors like, like this, this direction, the arrow shows the direction of the vector. And obviously the length uh, shows the magnitude. All right, like that. No. You guys have done writing? Should I go forward now? Yes. Okay. First, we are going to talk about parallel vectors. In parallel vectors, what you should remember... Can you tell the last vector? Impulse. Okay. In parallel vectors, just what the, happens? Kind of the I'm just writing it down. You can okay. Go. Okay. Who's not here yet? Yaya yeah, yeah, is yeah. here. Jija, okay. Everybody's here. He was also here. Fine. Okay. Now, let's suppose you have a body. And in that, uh, on that body, there are two forces acting. 10 newtons and five newtons. They're parallel and in the same direction. Then you can find the resultant by simply adding them like 10 plus five. So this is going to be 15 newtons and the direction is towards the right, 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 like that. That's pretty standard. If two vectors are given, but they're like two or more 
but they're opposite direction, like 10 newtons and pi. So there are two ways of doing this. Number one, that you simply take the bigger one, subtract the smaller one, and then it would be five newtons, whatever the, wherever the bigger one is, that would be the direction. The other method is that you assign a sign, which means that you could take this side as positive or this side as negative. You could also do the other thing. Like you can take positive on the left, negative on the right, doesn't really matter. So then the resultant will be plus 10 minus 5. So your answer comes as plus 5 and this plus indicates the direction. So because the direction is towards the right and because we took plus to the right and our answer is also positive, which means that the resultant has to be towards the right. Do you guys understand this? Everyone? Yes, sir. Very good. Now, the real issue comes when you have <clears throat> vectors that are not parallel, which means they are some, there's a sum, there's an angle between them. And the method we do, like the first method is a parallelogram method. Now, the thing is that he can actually ask you to do any method. So you need to learn all of them. Okay, now, a boat travels across a river in which the water is moving at 18. And then it says the velocity vector of boat and the river are shown. As you can see, and in still water. First, they say draw a vector triangle. So you're given an option between vector triangle or a scale diagram. Scale diagram means parallelogram. Uh, show that the resultant velocity of boat. Okay. Now, the first thing you should always remember in parallelogram method that both vectors will start from same point and end at the same point. That's the most important thing that you should remember, which means right now the boat velocity is this way. So which means the water velocity, this is the point where the boat is starting, uh, the vector is starting. So the other vector should also be starting from here. Oh my goodness. Like this. 1.8 meters per second and the direction is the same like towards the left obviously now if you notice this is 60 which means this whole thing is going to be 180 minus 60 so this has to be 120. do you guys agree yes now from this point onwards we are going to determine the resultant force. And how do we do that? It's pretty simple. First, you take the scale. The scale should be big enough to accommodate both the vectors. It should not be very, you know, small. Uh, it should not be that big that it goes out of your page. It should not be very small that it's very hard to read. So for this one, we could take one centimeter equals to one meters per second. So we just take in a scale. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you want to take the ruler and draw the easiest vector that you may. Oh, crap. Wait, my ruler has gone rogue. Oh, sorry, it has come back. Okay, now. So you, what you're going to do is you're going to draw like 
one and one point eight would be somewhere here. One point eight like this. So I drew one point eight centimeter. My scale is a bit smaller. Obviously, this is a digital one. So your scale would be obviously bigger. And then, oh my God, what, what you need to do is you need to measure 60 degrees from this side or 120 from that side, whatever you do. So when you have 60 degrees, you start from the same point and then you extend it to three centimeter because we have taken the scale as such, like this. So now this is three centimeter and this angle is obviously 120 degrees. Is that clear? Now, once you have this, then you need to draw, you, uh, you move your protractor again to the other point, make it 60 so that you get a parallel line. And then you can obviously extend this line to the same length, like one, two, and three. So automatically you will get three centimeter parallel line. And then just join this, these both together. And this line is the same as 1.8 centimeter. Now this makes a parallelogram. After this step, what you're going to do is you're going to draw the resultant. Now resultant is always drawn from the start. So this is the point where we started the drawing and this is the point where we ended it. So what you're going to do is you're going to draw resultant from start till end. And you can just simply connect the both points and this would be your resultant. Then you're gonna measure the resultant using your ruler and it's going to be one, two. On my scale, it's one, two and 2.5, 2.6. So I get 2.6 centimeters. If one centimeter was one meters per second, then 2.6 centimeter would be 2.6 meters per second according to my scale. This means that has to be the answer of my resultant. Please have a look at it. Let me know if you have a question now. I'm going to paste it right back. Into our answer space. So you guys can view later as well. Right here. Okay. That it looks very bad, but what can we do? Okay, now, no. so we got our answer as 2.6 meters per second. If you still have any questions, please do let me know. Yaya, what's up? Do you guys understand this? All oh, good. And uh, Ayan, Hiba, Khatija, Laiba. Yes, sir. Thanks. Ahmad, you and uh, Ayan are best friends, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. Okay, and Zahan as well. Okay, Zahan, do you understand? Yes, yeah, sir. All right. Now, so now you should all, if you still feel difficulty in this, you can always rewatch the recording that how, how I've taken the step. And obviously when you're practicing, you will, you know, do this. Now, this method 
is the least preferred by who by me because it takes too long and i don't want you to waste time on this the better method is the vector triangle okay so first of all let's look at this vector triangle is also known as head to tail rule and some people like to call that but this is basically the method to do vector triangles so we're going to learn this first of all it says underline all the vector quantities who's going to tell me what is the vector here momentum momentum and weight momentum weight very good no other ones it's fine now if you look at this diagram it says wind is at 45 degrees aircraft is going against the wind like that and it says draw the direction of resultant velocity of the aircraft now you should understand that in a vector triangle when you say head to tail rule what it really means is that if this is your first vector like the aircraft one this is the tail of the vector that is the head of the vector which means now you got to join head of first to tail of second this is basically the rule so when you draw first vector you should understand that the tail is right here and if i put the tail of the wind here it means wind vector is right like this this is wind and if you look closely here you might see that this is exactly what we have done we have joined head of first to tail of second is that clear yeah. one from which side do we measure the angle which side do we measure what the angle of the wind hold on hold on do you understand this at least yes yeah, sir i understand so once you've done this obviously then you have started the drawing from here so this is your start and this is your end so what you're going to do is going to oh crap wait a second this app has gone crazy okay pretty crazy actually where is it where is it okay so now i may extend it by hand so this would be your resultant from start to end okay now in this drawing obviously they say draw so it would be the resultant would be like you could draw the wind from here from the tail and then obviously the resultant is going to be somewhere here that would be your resultant understood so sir are we allowed to draw the wind again like by ourselves yes obviously okay all right otherwise you won't be able to you know draw the resultant that's the issue oh no the electricity is gone that's very bad anyway now it says determine the magnitude of resultant velocity now because in this method we are right now focusing on the graphical aspect of vector triangle so we're going to do only graphical one so what you're going to do is uh, the wind is 36 and the aircraft velocity is 250 if i take what can i take interesting enough right? some reasonable scale so first of all let's take a scale of like one centimeter to mm -hmm. one centimeter should be equal to um, some reasonable scale would be it if i divide by 10 then i have to draw 25 centimeter 25 centimeter is a lot like it's a lot but it's all right 
because it is vertical. So our page is uh, bigger than that, but uh, still, if you could make it bigger, if we do 20 centimeters, then I have to draw. If I do 20 meters per second, like this scale, then this aircraft I need to draw for 20 divided by 250 is what 12.5, I believe. 12.5. Okay. Which means I only need to draw 12.5, and the other one I need to draw like one point something, right? So 12.5. In your actual exam, you can take 10 because uh, my screen is a bit, you know, my ruler is a bit weird. So that's why I have uh, this issue. But you can obviously take uh, 10. And the wind, we have to take it as you can go to your calculator, you can divide 36 divided by 20. So it's 1.8. So you can take it as. 1.8 okay all right just a second weird 1.8 centimeter okay now we're going to do this so first of all I always try to make the easiest vector first so i'm going to take the screenshot the easiest vector would be the one that is completely vertical, which is the uh, airplane one. So I'm going to start from a point and I'm going to extend it to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh my goodness. It's even bigger. Wait. Let me start from here. My screen size is smaller. Your screen will be, obviously, your page is going to be much larger. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's start from here. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve point five, like that. So I got twelve point five centimeter right here. Okay. Then if you look at wind, wind is basically forty five degrees from the horizontal and it's like in the southeast direction. So 45 degrees would be this 45 as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my protractor right here. And then I'm gonna turn this, I will I'm gonna measure 45 degrees from the horizontal, which is right here. And then I'm gonna extend this line to one, two, okay, 1.8 only. Oh, it's two, sorry. I need to raise some of it. We have 1.8 like that. Okay, this is 1.8. So I got wind to be 1.8 centimeter like this. Now, if you see, I've joined the head to tail. Always check if you've done this. And then what I'm going to do is this was my start and that's my end. So I'm going to basically change the color and I'm going to draw, I'm going to connect these two points. Okay. So I'm going to connect these two points like this. And now this would be from start to end my resultant. I'm going to measure this line. And right now, this line seems like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 11.4. So now, time to change it into my scale. So what I used was, I used a scale of one centimeter being 20 meters per second, then 11.4 centimeter is going to be, you got to just multiply this with 20. Can you please uh, help me calculate this? 228. 228? 228 yes. meters per second. Okay, so that would be my answer. Now, how about the angle? I'll tell you. So the easiest way to take angle is that when 
you can basically take a reference from the vertical if he has not sent anything. So if this is 90 degrees. So, and this line is about 83. So 90 minus 83 is, so it should be like seven degrees. Do you understand? From the vertical. So we can say seven degrees from vertical if he asks. Sir, wait, can you repeat? I didn't get it. This is 90. If you put your um, protractor like this, so this would be 90, right? Yes. And on your protractor, this, this red line is going to be 83, right? How do I know it's 83? From the protractor. What do you mean? How, how you don't know how to read the protractor? Protractor has ninety here. Oh, we use a protractor. Yeah, okay. So, how do you? How else do you take angles with? Please enlighten me. Maybe trigonometry. No, this is a graphical method. You use protractor. So seven degrees from the vertical should be the angle seven or eight degrees, whatever it is, or six degrees. I don't know. So then, you copy this. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it. I think it will come here, I believe. In this question, they haven't asked for the uh, angles. You don't need to basically get the angle. But in any case, yeah, in any case, let's check whether we have found this, uh, the, the, uh, whether we have found the correct answer to this. Okay. And to do that, what paper is this? We did not do it through graphical method, then can we like apply a sine or cosine, like cosine yeah, rule? Yeah. yeah, they have allowed you to do that, but I'm right now teaching you graphical method. That's okay. Fine. So, okay. Do you understand? So that's how you do it. Now, this paper is from October, November 12, two, three. Okay, let's see and check whether we have done this correctly. October, November 12, two, three. Okay, wait. 2012 mark scheme. Uh, October, November, winter, two, three. Okay, good. So, where's the vector question? Okay, so it says uh, arrow to the right side from 424 that we have done. And then our answer is 228 and they have done it through, you know, um, for, uh, so they have said, if somebody has used scale diagram, their answer should be from 220 to 240. And that's what our answer is. How cool is that, right? Understood? Yes. Okay. Any person in this class, Patija, Javeria, Ahmad, Yaya, Sahan, Vasam. Any person this class doesn't understand this, please let me know. If you don't understand, I can help you again. Okay. So if you basically it's very similar to um, the parallelogram, but the only thing is that you need to make two less lines because then obviously you're just making resultant and you're making the other thing. Okay. Cool, Anna. Now, okay, I pulled the plug off my PC, it's a bit worse. All right, now let's move to the next portion of this. Now, this is my favorite method of all times, all right, because this is the easiest, and this is called vector triangle analytical. This is also the same as head to tail. All right, so it doesn't really matter. You still have to draw this, but you can just sketch it. You don't have to draw it according to scale, which is a good thing. Now, so for this, you need to first remember two formulas. First formula is the sine rule, which is if you see a triangle, any triangle, and this side is A, this side is B, this side is C. Okay, I 
should have drawn anyway. So A, B, and C. The angles are like this, right? So sine rule says that sine of angle A over A should be sine of angle B over B equals to sine C over C. You guys already know this, I believe, right? Yeah. The other thing is the cosine rule. Cosine rule says that C squared equals to A squared plus B squared minus two times A and B cosine of C. Is that clear? So if you want to find C, you just need to know you should know the angle opposite of it and the two other sides. Got it? Yes. Now, keep this, write this down. These are the two very important formulas for this. And now every trouble will be solved if you remember this now. So who's going to tell me what are the scalar quantities in the list, please? Mass, temperature, power. Mass, power, yes, these are the three. Okay, very good. Now, so it says now the boat is traveling in the following river, shows the velocity vector for the boat. And then it says that uh, the velocity of the boat is still in water and to the east and blah, blah, blah. And now it says draw the direction of the resultant on the boat. So basically what you can do is, you can draw, you can connect. This is the head of this vector. You can connect the boat water vector like this, which is eight, right? Because this is where it is head to tail, right? And then the resultant, because this started from here uh, and that ended from there. So you can simply just draw a straight line up to this point and that is going to be a resultant. Everybody agrees? Yes, sir. So the water vector is going to be 60, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 60 from the horizontal, from the east, right? So first of all, you should be doing this. So right? if we wanted to draw on the other one. Yes, you can do that. That's not a big deal. You can draw like boat water like this uh, separately. But do have to, you have to mention that this is 14, this is weight, right? Understood? Now. The interesting thing about this is, if you notice that the bow, the water velocity is 60 degrees from the east. So this direction is east, right? And this angle is 60 degrees. Everybody agrees? Yes. If this direction is 60, this angle will also be 60 because these are alternating, alternating angles. What do you guys say? Yeah. yeah. Yes. This means that now we have two sides and we got the angle in the in the middle, which is opposite of R. So we can use cosine rule. So let's use it. R square equals to the first side is 14 whole square. This other side is 8.0 whole square. Let's write it. Minus two times 14 times eight and cosine of 60, that is the angle opposite of it. Sir, now, uh, could you tell how you got eight again? Uh, this, the oh, speed okay. of, okay. see? Okay. So I read, basically I connect, I basic pick the vector from here, put it on the head of the previous one, and then I just use the angle, uh, like alternate angles to find what was the angle opposite of result. Do you understand? That's what you should do. Now you just need to, you don't need to do anything. It will just take two minutes of your time to solve this question. 14 squared plus eight squared minus two times 14 times, times cosine of 60. Are you sure? Okay, 148 under root two. So R square is going to be 148. So R will be 12.16. You convert back to the right significance. So 
meters per second would be the resultant. Do you guys understand this? And that's all you need. You see how much time does it take? Like I explained it to you. That's why it took like a couple of minutes, but it will only take 30 seconds to one minute to solve this question using vector triangle because this is so easy. If you just know that you need to find, you need to do sketch the correct right head to tail and find the angle opposite of resultant. Okay. Sorry, why didn't we take scale in this question? Because this is an analytical method. We are using trigonometry. We're not drawing anything. Understood? Okay. I didn't draw this drawing according to scale, right? I just put the values, use the formula, and got the answer. That's why I like this question. I like this method a lot. Okay. Is that clear, Laiba? Yeah, sir. Okay. And uh, Hiba, Ayan, everything is clear? Yes, sir. Good. Now. Uh, so, sir. Yes. Can we use this method in any question? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, if this if, if they specify that you use this particular method, then you have to use that method, unfortunately. You just can't use this method every single time. Okay. Oh my goodness, this app is making me crazy. Now the next PDF I'm making it on another app. This is not good. This is not good. For some reason, it okay. Now, so uh, then we have uh, basically resolution of vectors. Okay, resolution of vectors. In fact. Uh, I don't want to do resolution today. I want to leave it till the next class. But uh, I just want to basically give you a question uh, for uh, practice. Okay. So let's do one more question using vector triangle so it's more clearer. I think I, I wanted to do resolution with this. Yeah, practice questions. Okay. So um, I want to do, no, this is a resolution question as well. Um, okay. This one is a typical uh, vector triangle question. Okay. So let's do this. All right. So for this question, The biggest issue with this question is that now you might see that both vectors are starting from the same point, right? And for vector triangle, we don't want that, right? What do we want? We want to put head of like, we want to put the tail of one vector to the head of another. Like I can put, I can redraw this vector from this point like this. What do you guys say? Can I do that, please? Yes, sir. And this angle is going to be uh, 120 degrees. And this is 10, and that's also 10. If this is 120, now this is the start of the vector. Can I just, uh, instead of doing this, let me just redraw this. That's even you know better. So if I say the 10, let's draw any first vector. That is 10 newtons, horizontal one, which is the easiest one. The other one is like this from head to tail which is also 10, but this is 120 degrees. Okay. Got it? Yes. Now, if you look at this, this is the start and this is the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to connect these two. So this is going to be resultant, right? Now, in this uh, diagram, what is missing? The angle opposite resultant. How do I find this? Anybody has a clue? How do I find this angle? One 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 one. Yeah. Exactly. So can I say this will be 60 degrees, everyone? Yes. Now things are very easy because now I'm going to write R square equals to 10 square plus 10 square minus 2 times 10 times 10 and cosine of 60. You use your calculator. 10 square plus 10 square 
minus 2 times 10 times 10 times cosine 60. And then do not forget about the under root. So you take under root 100, that's 10, and that's, that would be your answer. Easy, right? Yeah. Easy. Yeah. So then this is a resolution question. We're not going to do that right now. Uh, this is also a resolution question. Okay, we're going to do this. Now, so this, sorry? What was the answer for that question? That question is from the uh, the last method that you're doing. You will, when you when you learn that, you'll automatically know that you won't be able to do this from vector triangles. So use this, okay? Because vector triangle can only deal with two forces. There are three forces in this, so we have to use the resolution. That's the last method, okay? That I'm going to teach you in next class. Now, let's look at this. This is a classic vector triangle question. In this one, it says two vectors are shown, x and y. You see the directions? He says, in which vector triangle does vector z shows the magnitude and direction of x minus y? So vector z is the resultant of x minus y. If x is this, minus y is going to be opposite of it. Do you guys understand? In vectors, minus sign means opposite of whatever is given. Do you understand? Yes. yes. Now, I need to connect these two as a head to tail rule. So I could draw minus y first, because that seems easy. And then x tail, I'm gonna put it right here. So x will be like this. Let me write minus y here. So x will be like this. Everybody understands this? Which means that the vector z is going to start from here. And so z should be like this. What do you say? Done. Right. Do you see a vector like that? I don't see a vector like this. This is not fair. Why? Why do I not see a vector like this? That's not fair. Yeah, an X is larger than Y. That's why it will be a right triangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be somewhere. Z should be somewhere. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. There's some issue with this. Wait. I need to do X minus Y. I could draw. X is definitely larger. So it should be either straight. It should be something like this. Okay. Okay, never mind. So the thing is that all these vectors, like you see, uh, if I say, wait a second, I have to redraw because Sir, in what this is the vector for x plus y and reverse the resultant. We have to reverse the resultant, yes. So let's draw x first this time. Okay, let's draw x first and then connect the tail of y minus y like this. This will be minus y. And then the resultant has to be from here till here. So Z, Z should be something like this. Do you see uh, something like this is right here? B, do you guys understand this? But sir, in B, the uh, head of X is not connecting with the tail of Y. So I guess- Yeah, that's be... true. That's true, Vassam, because this is just Y written. Minus Y would be in this direction. No? Head to tail. You see? That's why. Do you get my point, Vassam? Yes, sir, sir. I don't get it. You see, in this one, x is x is x should be in the same direction as it is, right? Because it is just positive in the equation. And then it is minus y that needs to be connected with the head of x. You agree to this? Yes. That makes resultant to go up vertically. Okay. Okay. If I draw this, if I draw, this is x, it just looks like this, right? And minus y would be like this, minus y. Do you agree? 
yeah. and they right. In the diagram, they have just confused you by, also I got confused as well for a second because minus y, if minus y is in this direction, then obviously y is going to be in this direction. Do you okay, understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they've just confused. So I got also confused. This is a difficult question. Very nice, very nice. I like this. Do you understand now? Yes, yeah, sir. But the vector triangle is correct because y will be obviously towards the right, minus y will be towards the left, and the resultant will always be in the same direction that we have drawn. Okay, very nice. Is there anybody who has still an issue with this? Please let me know. Okay, Khatija and uh, Hamad, Suhail. No. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay. Uh, can you go to the notes? I want to copy one thing. Yes. Where? Which part? Which method? Uh, Third first page. Uh, more. Let me go above. Yes. This yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I believe you have a, a good idea of how these questions will be done. Um. Now the homework for today, obviously. Uh, I'm just uh, going to mark that so you practice vector triangle. Um, parallelogram method, well, it's not too, you know, important, but uh, I believe you have also done that in your O levels or IGs. So if you have done that, obviously you have some practice for that and I don't recommend it either. So you can practice vector triangle because that would be uh, in your exam a lot. So then uh, I'm just going to mark some questions for you. You do it with vector triangle. Um, yeah, so this is like an open ended question. You can do it with any Wait, I specifically kept the no, not do this only from practice questions. Wait. You got to do, um, don't, don't. Okay, you can do this one, please. This is homework. Uh, I also am writing vector triangle. Okay. And you also need to do this one. This is also vector triangle homework. Rest of them are from uh, resolution vectors, so don't do them. Okay, yet. Is that clear, everyone? All right, then I'm going to see you in the next class. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Damn it. And I'll your previous work, please. Uh, so will we have tomorrow uh, tomorrow we'll have class why oh uh, the other group yes yes yeah. the other group yes yes obviously okay. Okay. love is it love is it love is